All right, so I bet y'all are wondering what I'm doing today. Well, today I'm over in uh, Starkville, Mississippi. This is actually where the Mid-South Forestry Equipment Show is going to take place right here. This is kind of the headquarters of the show. When you come in, this is going to be the first place that you come to is right here. And this is their restored logger's dream. This thing is sitting right here behind us, and I'm going to show you some pictures of this. But I'm standing here with uh, Misty Booth. Misty, you're the show manager mm -hmm. for the thing. How long have you been have you been involved with the show now? I've been involved with the show uh, over 11 years. Of course, I got involved with the show when I was a student. We can talk about how long ago that was, but as far as directly involved with managing the show, it's been about 11 years. Good deal. What uh, y'all have it every other year, right? That's right. Every other year. Uh, why? Why every other year for? <laughs> I couldn't imagine having it every year. Right. Uh, that, that would uh, we'd do nothing but if we had it every year. It takes a full year to pretty much plan the show. So, two years. At, at, plus, there's other shows right. uh, throughout the region and and uh, country and even in Canada that affect the timing of our show. And right. so we stay in in a cycle to not come conflict with their schedule because this is a major undertaking right absolutely huge undertaking mm -hmm. give us an idea what uh, two years ago for the show what kind of numbers did y'all see come through here uh, our two-day attendance is give or take 6,000 we had 6,800 in 2014 and we had consistently that attendance since 2006 so right, for 10 right. years we've, we've been having a very hefty attendance now, the neat thing about this show is, is the fact that it's not only the logging show where you can look at machines, but the machines are actually running here, right? Y'all have timber to cut, the companies come in, and they cut and run the machines and everything, right? That's correct, and in fact, the Mid-South Forestry Equipment Show is the longest continuously running uh, live in-woods demonstration in the nation. You know, wow. where the, it, the manufacturers get to demonstrate their their machines in a live in-wood setting. Right. Uh, we've, uh, the show has over a 30-year history. We started in the mid-1980s. So, so we've got a, a long history of offering this outreach and this grassroots technology transfer between manufacturers and the end user. Right now. We're currently on the John W. Starr Memorial Forest. This is forest land owned by Mississippi State University. Uh, and this is the permanent home of the Mid-South Forestry Equipment Show. So that's unique to our show too, that we have a permanent home and, and place to, to have the show. So me and Misty are riding down the road. I'm gonna turn the camera back around here in just a second. And this show is open to everybody, right Misty? I mean, it is. Uh, we really market the show as a family friendly event and it is. Uh, you know, if you come to the show and uh, register to come in, your spouse and your children under the age of 18 that are coming with you, get in with your registration. And and registration, uh, pre-registration is open right now on our website. Uh, so it's $15 if you pre-register online. And that's for the whole family. I mean, $15 covers the whole family. You get both days of the show. So uh, we have a children's area at our show. Uh, so. Uh, to keep the kids entertained and and uh, and the other thing that people may not realize is the show is open to the public um, anybody could, that's interested could come um, right. so it's not just a trade show just for manufacturers or just for loggers um, of course you know loggers and foresters and landowners are probably our primary target audience but it's open to anybody that has an interest we, we invite anybody to come so what she's saying, if you didn't understand that, I'll say it again. If you like logging and you like big machines and you like things that put off diesel fumes like I do, uh, this is a place to come. You know, I've said it in one of my videos before, Misty, that, that logging is much different than anything else. It's in more of a closed environment. It's not like a football game or a baseball game or being able to go and see a house being built. It, uh, you can't necessarily see it, but this right here give, is gonna give everybody an opportunity to be able to come and see this. So we're coming into the live demonstration place where this will be 
uh, this year. This is where all the machines will be sitting. So Misty, there's a, not only is a logging show where you can see machinery run, but there's also a lot of uh, continuing education going on. Ex explain that a little bit for people, for non-logging, non-forestry people. Tell us about that. Well, um, loggers and foresters uh, are required to uh, have continuing education, just like uh, several professions. And uh, the, the show is an opportunity for them to get some of those continuing ed credits. We offer presentations um, throughout both days. Uh, they can get credit for attending the show. Um, so we'll have our continuing education tent at the north end of our live area and we'll even have some some field uh, presentations as well um, so that those presentations are part of your show admission so it's not like you have to register for them in advance or you can just come to the show and go to those and and you know foresters and, and loggers like that because they're getting credit but those presentations are open to anybody that attends the show so landowners may find them interesting or even people that aren't uh, familiar with the industry it may learn something at those too. Everybody's welcome to attend those. Correct. And that's what, the show is two days. It's a Friday and a Saturday. And what we do is, like she said, um, we have to keep our credit hours up on our education. Every year we have to have so many credit hours. So what we do is we come over here on Friday and we attend the classes mm -hmm. and stuff and get our hours in. And then, of course, uh, Saturday, we enjoy the show. We can still enjoy the show some on Friday, but it's a lot of, a lot of classroom time. All right, now, one other thing let's talk about. Uh, what all kinds of competitions and uh, contests are y'all having this year? Uh, we'll, we'll have the skitter contest. That's kind of a show staple. Um, and uh, Stribbling Equipment, uh, our John Deere dealership is sponsoring mm -hmm. that. Uh, so we uh, shout out to them. Thank you very much. Right. Um, and then we're going to have a loader competition and uh, B&G equipment. Our Tiger Cat dealership will be sponsoring that. Uh, so thank them. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you guys for that. Um, if we have enough room, I, I tell you, our exhibitor response this time around has been phenomenal. At this point, we have 84 exhibitors. Which that was is my next record. question. I was fixing to ask you how many people you were going to have. It's a record. And uh, so our static area is overflowing, we're re that, which is a good thing. And static, um, static area is where nothing's running. It's that's right. where you walk around. Because y'all will have stuff from, I know in the past, you know, y'all have, you know, big trucks will be sitting out there and stuff like that. And you'll have like, little uh, one-man sawmills and stuff. I'm sure y'all probably got some people like that coming. Right, in, wood know. misers coming. Wood, wood misers coming, okay, mm -hmm. good deal. Uh, you know, I remember seeing that stuff. A uh, lot of stuff under the pavilion, a lot of your... That's more of your tabletop exhibitors. Correct. So uh, uh, informational type booths or smaller uh, hand tools type right. things. Forestry suppliers will be under there. Uh, some of our uh, timber clothing uh, exhibitors, uh, you'll have real estate companies, insurance companies, those types of folks are under the pavilion. We'll kind of reach out to the schools and the vocational stuff too, right, Misty? We do. Friday is our schools at the day, uh, schools at the show day. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's getting late. Um, and, and we provide complimentary registration for groups that want to come to the show as long as they can let us know ahead of time and there's a form out on our website that they can use to, to uh, register their group and we're, we're really targeting high school vocational programs or the community college technical programs or youth groups like 4-H or scouts or Envirathon teams or FFA you know, that would have a, a real interest in the show. So we want to get those those young people out here um, to see it. So the, the show is very accessible. Uh, it's right on the side of the four lane, uh, just south of Starville. If you're heading south out of Starville, it'll be on your left. If you're heading north towards Starville, it'll be on your right. There's no way on God's green earth you could miss it. Because I know last time I was here, y'all had big flashing signs out there along the road and everything, didn't we you? We do. We, we, try, we always uh, try to get MDOT to help us with the traffic. Um, Correct. Uh, and so they typically have their signs out there um, to caution people that there's people turning ahead and, and let them know there's going to be some traffic. So it's hard to miss. And, you know, we had... Hopefully we'll have great weather and the, oh, yeah. the flag will be flying. It's a very tall flagpole out there right. and uh, it's hard to miss it with all those tents and everything. It, it, it's quite something to see.
Okay. We do. Uh, there's a shuttle between the static area and the live area, so you don't have to walk that distance. Right. Uh, it's about a half mile. So you, right. Um, and, and we do have a limited number of UTVs, and we uh, try to help anybody with mobility issues, getting from the parking lot to registration. It is an outdoor show. It is a pedestrian show. You do have to walk, and, but we, uh, we always have more demand for help than we can accommodate, but we try to help that, uh, those folks with, with, uh, who want to come to the show and, and see it, and we do the best we can to try to accommodate that and help them do so. Do. Um, you know, and I, I would say uh, one question we get a lot is, can I bring my own golf cart? Can I bring my own UTV? <laughs> and unfortunately, we can't allow that. It's a liability issue. Like, like you said, uh, safety is our number one priority yeah. in all of this. Right. And uh, believe it or not, even with the big machines running and demonstrating uh, logging operations, our biggest liability is combining vehicular traffic with pedestrian traffic. So we can't allow it, but we, we try to help everybody that needs help. and, and um, it, it, uh, along that same lines, we, we ask folks not to bring their pets. I know everybody right. wants to bring their pet, but uh, we ask them not to. But, of, of course, service animals are, are of course, welcome. Correct. Because there's a, to understand with, you know, upwards of 7,000 people and then the, the vendors, exhibitors being here and, and all their people and then these machines running, it is mind-boggling the amount of stuff that is going on over here every second that the show is going on. So um, I just want to invite all y'all. You know, y'all know my passion is logging and promoting logging. And, you know, I said it in a video earlier this week, you know, there's going to be a lot of stuff going on over here. And there's a lot of people who have reached out wanting to meet me and stuff like that, you know, see machines and all. Here's your opportunity. You come over here to Starville and I'm gonna be wandering around. Misty will be around. She'll be running around like a chicken with her head cut off. <laughs> <Ain't> <laughs> yeah. I wanna see me. <laughs> yeah. And uh but it's a it's a good time. That's the reason why I wanted to do this was to put this video together for y'all to kind of give you a brief glimpse of what it's like and uh, we had talked about before the show starts, the week of it, I'm going to come back and visit. And I'm going to give you all some behind the scenes stuff uh, as to them kind of doing a little bit of setting up where you can kind of see what's, what it takes to pull this thing off and, and, and just, you know, just how monumental this thing is. But uh, to give you an idea from Dallas, Texas, you're looking at about an eight to nine hour drive, depending on how many times you stop from the East Coast, say Savannah, Georgia. You're looking at about an eight to nine hour drive from there. Uh, Nashville, Tennessee, about a four and a half hour drive. Memphis is about a three hour drive from the coast. From New Orleans, you're looking at about Misty. It takes a lot of uh, partners and sponsors to make all this happen. So. Who are some of those uh, people that are doing that? Absolutely. The show could not happen without all the volunteers that come out to help with that. Um, our, our show sponsors are the Mississippi Forestry Association, Mississippi Loggers Association, of course, Mississippi State University, and Hatton Brown Publishers in uh, Montgomery, Alabama, helps us with marketing and promoting the show. But uh, we have sponsors uh, that help us with it as well. Uh, Mississippi Forestry Commission helps us with the parking. Uh, the MSU student chapter of the Society of American Foresters does our concession stand. They staff that. That's a big fundraiser for them. Um, our extension uh, service at the university, Forestry Extension, uh, handles our continuing ed and provides those. This thing only happens every other year. And here's your opportunity for most everybody in the southeast it's a quick little day drive to get here and it's based in starville mississippi there's plenty of hotels in starville because it's a home of mississippi state university there's no football game that weekend right it can't be no, it we can't, can't be it there's no way it can we do that schedule it that way which i already knew the answer to that but you got starville and then you got west point there's plenty of hotels there and then you got columbus where i live is about a 30 minute drive west point's about a 30 minute drive and 
so you can come in and everything's real quick real close by it i'm gonna include the link to the logging show down below of course y'all know how to contact me feel free to contact me i'll try to answer any of the questions that you have if i can't answer them i'll pass them on to misty and i guarantee you she can answer them but uh i just i wanted to put this together because logging's what i love logging's what i do logging's who i am and of course this is the logging show absolutely and i'll just reiterate it's open to the public anybody can come this is your opportunity to learn more about logging and the good work that these guys right. do and and like you said it's kind of behind the scenes you're out in the right. woods nobody gets to see that and and, they, and loggers do a great job of sustaining and protecting our resources they harvest it and providing for us and uh, this is that opportunity there's a lot more information i'm sure we didn't cover out on our website midsouthforestry.org <laughs> our contact information is out there don't hesitate to call us and, and we'll, we'll try to help you any way we can and when you get here don't fill out a place everybody's really nice even if you're not gonna buy a two hundred thousand dollar machine you can come up to any body with john deere tiger cat caterpillar Rodebeck, uh, Woodmiser, any of those guys, they will talk to you. They will talk to you. And, uh, uh, you know, everybody's really nice. And if you have a question, you can bump somebody beside you and they'll, they'll tell you what's going on too. So that's a pretty neat thing. I just want to make everybody feel welcome to, uh, to come to this. So um, Misty, I, I appreciate your time oh, this I afternoon you, Tim. and, uh, and getting together with me and, and, we filming this right here and we're going to do some more so but i appreciate it thank, thank you very you. much thank you